Good day guys, I'm Mini Wall Painter. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted the white underside to my Exalted Sorcerer's cape. So if you're keen to learning a bit about glazing, don't go anywhere. I'll catch you after the intro. Part 2 The Cape So if you look in now, you can see I've completed the gold trim and blue panels to the backpack, along with other details including the large round gems at the front. If you like how I've painted the gold details on this backpack, I have a video on my channel where I show you everything you need to know about how I painted it. And there's a video as well on how I painted the gems. Now get ready for some magic. So if you look in now, I've based the bottom of the cape with pallid witch flesh. This is going to be my mid-tone, and if we now flip it over, shazam! I thought I'd make the effort of squeezing in the top of the cape just for you guys. If you like how I've painted this side of the cape, you can watch how I painted these tones in a previous video on my channel, where I paint the cape of a previous Exalted Sorcerer. So first things first, I'm going to shade down with Yushanti Bone. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I usually like to highlight up and shade down, but I'm making the exception in this case because working with white is bad enough, let alone trying to glaze up to it from a darker tone, such as Yushanti Bone. So the key to glazing is adding enough water to the paint in order to thin it down so it tints the surface. I like to gaze this by observing the application to my thumbnail. And I'm just going to start applying this glaze to all the deep folds of the cape aim to draw the brush towards the deep areas of the folds, in order to manipulate the pigment to be more focused in these areas as I require them to be the darkest. It's very important to let each layer of glazing dry before you apply the next, repeating this process of glazing with the same tone, focusing the glaze more and more towards the darkest recess, is what gives you that seamless transition. So I'm going to attempt this glaze one more time just to help reinforce these darker recesses. Hopefully you can see here those darker tones building up slightly next to my original mid-tone. The next stage to shading down is to focus further darker tones towards any aggressive deep folds in the cape to add depth to the model. In this case I'll be looking to use Zandri Dust to achieve this. Again this is a glaze so be sure to add plenty of water.
On completion of this stage, I felt that Zandri Dos was rather a harsh tone to drop to from Usanti Bone, and maybe a mixture of the two tones would have been better. But not a problem, because I'd already planned to glaze over the higher areas of the folds with my original mid-tone, Pallid Witch Flesh, just to tidy up any areas I didn't like. And glazing this lighter tone over the darker Zandri dust areas was perfect for bringing those darker tones up a notch to where I wanted them to be. The thing with glazing, my opinion of course, is that it's not an exact science to how much water to add, it's situational dependent. If you want a smoother result, add more water and take the time to build up the layers. If you just want to knock out the glazing stage, then less water will give you a more stronger pigmented glaze, so you don't need to glaze as many layers to get a strong finish. But don't forget, that being said, a glaze is a glaze, and not adding enough water to begin with will eliminate the state that the paint has to be in in order to be considered a glaze, which is to tint, not to layer. With that stage completed, you can see now how tidy and smoother the transitions now appear. You'll be impressed how good a simple glaze can save the day, when you're not happy about the tones of paint you've used when working so hard to achieve your desired effect. So now I'm going to take my highlights to the max by glazing on some white scar. You'll notice this glaze is quite thick to the usual glaze I'll use. This is just a fine example of what I explained earlier. It's all situational dependent. I know pallid witch flesh is not far off from pure white, so I'm not worried about this glaze standing out harsh against it. So using this to my advantage, I've applied less water than usual, but still enough to colour to glaze, so I can get this stage done a little quicker. You'll notice now this glaze is going to be applied to the highest areas of each fold and when I come to the more finer creases as the cape connects to the backpack I'll switch to more of an edge highlight approach with just a little water to my paint rather than a glaze. This is to avoid the risk of the white running into the recessed areas by mistake being highly diluted. With the final glaze completed, the bottom of the cape is finished, leaving me a nice subtle warm white, which will contrast nicely with the cold blue armour. I'll leave you now with a final shot of the completed backpack. Enjoy. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please give it a thumbs up, if you've anything to add please don't hesitate to comment down below, if you're on Instagram you can find me at miniwar underscore painter.
Here you can follow my progression as I like to post regularly on my stories. Don't forget to subscribe and don't be shy to mix those paints. Ta-ra!